Meeple Nation podcast, episode 479, Top Hug a Meeple Moments. Welcome citizens to Meeple Nation. Grab your favorite beverage, pull up a chair, warm up those dice, and join us at the game table as we discuss board games and the board gaming world. Each week, the hosts of Meeple Nation share their love for board games and the amazing memories that come from playing games with some very outstanding people. Let us now join our hosts in their natural habitat, the game table. We are the hosts of Meeple Nation. I'm Nathan Howard. I'm Dave Holliday. I'm Logan Howard. I'm Andy Holliday. And I'm Douglas Stewart. Meeple Nation is sponsored by GameToppersLLC.com. Tell us about your topper, Claudine. Let me tell you about my topper. It is a, tell me what kind I have again. You have a Watson. I have a Watson. Yeah, because I was going to get this size, and Nathan said, no, you need the bigger table. Okay, and then you have the Mycroft. I have mm-hmm. the Watson. Yes. So you, you, you heeded my advice. I did heed your advice. And you upgraded to uh, andy size Watsons, mm-hmm. or andy size Mycrofts. Mm-hmm. And so. love it. Love it. It is wonderful. I, I wouldn't want it any smaller, because when you get a big group around the table, you need everyone... I mean, it does sometimes feel a little bit too big because you can't reach things, but when you've got game nights, it's definitely the one to have. Absolutely. Oh, I can with my freakishly long arms. (laughs) 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 I've always joked, Julie can reach stuff, it's fine. (laughs) I can do it with my asking people to help me. (laughs) I think my daughter's used it more than I have. She's had several game nights there. Well, excellent. Welcome to the Game Toppers Nation. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome to a Saturday, a Friday. It's not Thursday because that's when they shoot people in North Salt Lake, <laughs> North Ogden. <laughs> Welcome, friends, to another Meeple Nation event. From within the bustling streets of Pleasantville, Utah, at the core of gaming the world throughout, many Great and powerful gamers have been pulled together by Nathan, and today we celebrate Hug a Meeple Con. So, sit back, relax, take your shoes off, undo your belt, prepare to play. <laughs> you definitely need to undo the belt, too, because there is a lot of food. Undo the belt! <laughs> yeah. It almost feels like... Hosts of Meeple Nation are five of the most intelligent men that you will ever meet. Sorry. Five of the most intelligent men that you will ever meet. We've got Dave Holliday, Andy Holliday, Logan Howard, Nathan Howard, and Doug Stewart. (laughs) (laughs) If any information that you need, you can check out our blogs. Well, their blogs, photos. Links to episodes on, um, and you can look at the bios. If you have any questions, you can email us at meeplenation.com. If you'd like to be a patron, which um, is a really good thing to do, it's a chance to support us. You would have influence. You know, money. Money is influence. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, we truly do want to thank our patrons. In fact, we have one, two, three, four patrons here that uh, support us, and we are very glad to uh, have them here and appreciate their support. Uh, Monique, Linda, Dave, and Doug, all uh, contributors to the podcast, and we very much appreciate them. This week, we are talking about the epic moments that we've had at Hug Me Con. Yeah, we're pretty excited. We've had uh, six of seven of these events so far. And we are really excited to have them once again. And somebody didn't silence their phone, Greg. He wasn't here for the warning. <laughs> but also we have some people that this is their first Hug a Meeple event. And uh, so we also wanted to have them include some of their highlights from uh, meeting us at SaltCon and uh, just take some time to uh, uh, embrace the, the joy that we have of meeting with this group of people uh, we meet at SaltCon, we meet at these Hug a Meeple events, and we have just become close, almost, uh, dare I say, family close, that uh, we really just look forward to these uh, these meetings, and uh, we really look forward to this recording this episode with you guys, too. So we are very glad to have you here. 
Uh, Dave, you looks like you're anxious to say something. I just wanted to smell the mic. Um, <laughs> um, no, of, of all of the cons that we go to, I think for all of as the podcast, I think we're probably all in agreement that Hug a Meeple Con is our favorite. We were just talking about how much work it was and everybody was apologizing for invading uh, Andy's phone, uh, phone, invading Andy's home. Later in the year, we, uh, we invade Julie's home and it is a lot of work but it is so much fun. And uh, we came over late last night and helped Andy uh, fight the table that we're currently standing around, putting the late kit on this table. It was not an easy task. There was a lot of pirate words that were used. I do appreciate that you guys helped while I was upstairs trying to fix the leaky sink, but there was a lot of pounding and hammering going on, which should not, those were noises that should not be be being heard while they're put you're putting a leg kit on my topper i was i was i had to call down a few times do you guys need help down there no everything's fine <laughs> amara's bleeding but that's all right <laughs> andy let's start with you since you had the mic right there you know i had a hard time as i was thinking about all the hug a meeple cons that we've had i really had a hard time pinpointing a favorite moment i would have to say the very first hug a meeple con was my favorite one just because of the fact, I mean, kind of doing the background as to why we started this is because of COVID and they canceled all the conventions. So we decided to do our own. And I think that was my favorite one. I don't think there was a specific moment, but it was getting to know all the hug ladies. I was still fairly new and I I hadn't really met everybody yet. So that was the, my opportunity to get to know all of you guys. For me, that was probably my favorite moment and the best part of all, all the hug a meeple cons was building, starting that friendship that I've that I've built with you guys. I think that was better than any game I've ever played. Can I piggyback off of you, Andy? That, Absolutely. That that's actually one of my highlights from hug a meeple con is that you know salt con's fun and everything, but it's a loud place to be able to get together at hug a meeple con where I can sit, talk, and actually chat with people while playing a game where I can actually hear them is one of my favorite parts about hug a meeple con. As you were saying, it's one of our favorite things is because also. It's like kind of like a custom con that we created for ourselves. And so, yes, that's why it's a highlight is because we created it for ourselves. You know, Logan, you, you talk about the volume at SaltCon, but I think the loudest single <laughs> experience at a convention was in Julie's basement at Hug a Meeple Con. Hug a Meeple Con South, what was it? Was it last year or the year before? The year before. Two years before. <laughs> so I, I get it, but... <laughs> Wasn't that Sarah coming in from the back room to yell at us for being too loud? It was it was the same convention, but it was it was when we were you guys were playing Werewolf and I've never heard Logan yell shut up to everybody before. <laughs> but that happened a couple of times. All right, Julie, as the official unofficial uh, leader of Hug. I have no idea where that came from. Okay. <laughs> well, mostly just cuz it's hosted at your house in the south and you started them all on games. Sarah says, give us one of uh, your highlights. It's hard to choose a moment because I, I remember the things that I remember are usually the social deduction type of games um, or games where we're talking a lot. Those aren't necessarily our group's favorite games. Our favorite games, games are the heavier games, but they tend to be thinky and not so talky. <laughs> and so I think Snake Oil, when we were playing it here at Andy's house, it got a little out of control, but I found out a lot about how all of you think, and I'm <laughs> not super proud to know you at this moment. <laughs> no, these people are a lot of fun, and I think Andy and his wife uh, not playing the game, laughing behind my back, literally behind my back, because I couldn't see them. They're laughing about jokes that I'm not at all getting, and i saying things, and other people are saying things that are <laughs> maybe going over my head, but it was very... Very interesting and enlightening. Yeah, Sabrina very much enjoyed that session of not playing Snake Oil. I thought I was a bad influence until that game. Right. <laughs> I thought you were too. <laughs> Dave, this is your first Hug Meeple Con. You are our favorite uh, beat farmer from Werewolf. Now our honorary introducer. So you don't have any Hug Meeple Con experiences, but I'm sure you have plenty salt con experiences with us. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah, this I guess this rate is my best. 
as I think back, probably the first contact with Meeple Nation was 14 or 15, and you had a, you recorded your podcast. The Lost Episode, yes. Yeah. And I think that was the first introduction. And after that, you know, searched you out, started listening, seeing your stuff, and then realizing you were hosting games. So that was probably the first interaction was it was it was a lot of fun. There was a lot of laughs. Everyone was very friendly. And then with the rest of the motorcycle gang here. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, if you hear some loud noises, the rest of Hugs rolling up on their Harleys from uh, Harriman, as long as we don't get busted. You know, remember, snitches get stitches, so everyone <laughs> flush your stuff if you hear a knock on the door. <laughs> I think one of the first times I saw the uh, Hugs people, they're all rolling in and matching uniforms, you know, <laughs> sitting around there smoking by the door and uh, <laughs> flipping coins and, uh, you know, stealing meeples from little children. It, it was pretty intimidating, you know. <laughs> The event I remember was 1617. I don't know. There was a, a Salem 1692 game. Must have been a dozen or 15 people at the table, and most of them was just this group and big. And, and that, that was a lot of fun. That was the first time. I, I spent 35 years in law enforcement. The job required me to do all kinds of things. I, I spent years in narcotics and undercover. I did all the fun stuff. You, you talk about the event that was in the news. Everyone, oh, that's terrible. And I'm going, oh my gosh, that sounds fun. I wish I was there. But it seems like over the years, being around crowds and dealing with people, and, and it just burnt right out of me. And it's a struggle sometimes. But a group like this, this is the funnest thing. This is why I always sign up for games with you guys. That's why I always hope that there's an interaction, because this is uh, for somebody now that's, that's struggling with liking people, let alone being with them. Uh, <laughs> this is a nice group. I feel very comfortable. I come play games uh, that I normally don't play. This is just a really cool thing. So I'm looking forward to be playing games I probably never played or even thought I wanted to play here. And that's, that's just what I've come here today, for these next two days, is just you throw it on there. If you're willing to teach me, I'm willing to, to try to play. And uh, you know what? I think the neatest thing about this whole world is I gave up my competitive, unless my life is on the line, my competitive jock has been put away a long time ago. I burned all of that drive out. All I want to do is play. I just want to have fun. And if I win, oh man, that's just cherry on the top. But if not, all I want to do is play and, and just laugh and have fun. Well, that's good. We're glad you're here. And I think you're going to love this weekend. Okay, Dave, I, I actually have a follow-up question for you as well. So you're kind of... Let me get in here really close. Oh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> let's, let's share the microphone at the same time. This is a great picture. <laughs> is, is that is that Axe? Is that Axe I can smell on no, you? No, it, it's not. It's my oh. lotion. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> but... <laughs> hey, I've, I've kissed Dave. Yeah, Probably. don't knock it until you... Tr Tell She's very judgy. <laughs> Okay, so my question for you, Dave, is that you're kind of infamous at our salt cons about your defenses when people accuse you of being werewolf. How much time do you spend preparing, thinking of what your next defense is, and then actually preparing it? Because you come with like props, you came with evidence pictures of you being arrested for other things, giant scrolls that had like a whole paragraph of why you were innocent, to your vaccine card. There's so many things that you've done. Kind of curious about how much time you spend prepping for that moment. It's usually not a lot because the panic has gotten to me that I got to come up with something. And it's the bittersweet of that because I do enjoy it when I get a, what I think is a good idea. It's getting there and going, oh man, what can I do? What can I do? There are times when within a week or two of the last salt con, an idea will come to me and I'll write it down and I'll think about it. I mean, this last thing with the scroll kind of came because I had nothing. And then I just started, uh, you know, what can I do that requires me to do very little? I wrote out some stuff and then Tammy added some stuff and, and we came up with that. The vaccine, that was really easy. We were in the middle of, <laughs> of uh, you know, who, who didn't have their vaccine card up on, you know, magnet to the uh, fridge with your kids so you knew you were allowed to step outside your yard and not be shot. 
<laughs> like we're, unless you're in North Ogden, then you, yeah. it's well, yeah. Even in your yard, it's dangerous. Yeah. Uh, but, but don't go out on a Thursday. <laughs> Thursdays, yeah. yes. Sometimes there's a lot that goes into it. And then sometimes an idea comes and it just kind of flows. And, you know, I've been lucky to put a few things together. The story comes to me. But like I said, I used to do improv in high school. I loved that. I loved working undercover. I loved doing that stuff. But it's so hard now. It's harder now. It's like I blew all that out when I left the profession. I left my my boots on the mat and I walked away and, and it's hard. So I, I have to sit and, and really think about it. The only thing that makes it work is it is a fun group, even if you don't know everyone there. The atmosphere, Nathan and Logan, has put together such a fun thing about Werewolf. So sometimes long, sometimes it just comes to me, and I'm just writing just as quick as I can, and I, and I get an idea, and then it's just a matter of how do I cut and paste, or how do I make this, or... I wonder if the guys that used to work for me, will they, will they let me shoot pictures, go back to my old job and get pictures taken? And, and so it's like I'm still struggling figuring out what's going to be summer. So I'll call I got an idea. I don't know how it's going to work, if it will work. And if we play it this weekend, I'm screwed. I don't know. <laughs> Well, we have Legacy Werewolf planned for this weekend, so we'll see how your improv skills match up to this. We'll still kill you. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the bottom line. I realized that uh, I w- I've only been a wolf once. And Portland? William. Seattle? William. Right, right. It was the, it was the night... Of what was there, 65? It was, the it was big, a huge group, 65 people yeah. there. Right and, at the beginning. And he and I have had this kind of battle over the years, you know. And the one time, it's got to be, what, two years ago, three years ago, I was the werewolf. And it's like the second, William was the second one to, to challenge. And, of course, everyone, most of the time, everyone votes to kill me. And that was it. Yeah, he was pretty excited about that game because he was the chupacabra Yes, yes. He almost made it to the end and won. And he should actually be joining us this weekend, too. So we'll have some uh, epic face-off there with Dave and William. One of my favorite memories of Werewolf is one of the few times I was actually the werewolf, because I normally die, too, was Claudine and I were werewolves, and then we won. And it was like a crazy victory. But one of the few times (laughs) I was actually a werewolf. Even with Sarah cheating. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Sarah never cheats. You have to give examples and proof. Should we ask your mother-in-law? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Rest her soul. Rest her soul. All right, Tammy. You're, uh, uh, Tammy waves high. She's a huge support for Dave, and she's a lot of fun to game with, too. Linda wants to say something behind me, too. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's jump back to Monique. Hi. Hey. Um, I don't know. So I think just my favorite moment is just when we first met everybody. So I had met Nathan in 2016 when I went to SalCon. I have no idea if you remember, but we played a few games and I was like, Nathan's the best. He's so fun. And I couldn't wait to go to SalCon again to like play another game with him. And I just remember coming to our first Tug and Maple Con, meeting everybody. And so I feel like the hug, like I love him. But, like, they're still my mom's friends, and I've known them for, like, all my life. Very fun mom's friends. (laughs) But I'm sure my mom has, like, vented to them about my teenage years or, you know, (laughs) said some stuff about me. (laughs) So I love them. They're awesome. But at, at the same time, it's, like, they're probably still my mom's friends first versus, like, my friends. But just meeting you, like, Meeple Nation people is like, oh, you guys are my friends. Not just, well, I guess you're my mom's friends. <laughs> but, <laughs> We're not exclusive, though. Monique, you just aged me 50 years. Like, I feel like I'm as young as <laughs> you aged yourself no. by saying 50. I, I had to go through the same thing with Nathan's group because, like, I was invited right. when I was like 14 and 15. And so then when I started coming as an adult, there was that transition period of like, okay, these are my friends as well, not just my uncle's friends. Yeah, and everybody was just, like, so welcoming and nice. And I just remember, so we gamed for two days and being like, 
wow, I feel really close to these people. We gamed. I've known them two days. I can't say that about anybody else that I've known two days. So it's really fun. And then I remember the werewolf in my mom's basement that was loud, that was brought up and yelling. And then Claudine, I don't know what it was. It was really late at night, so we're all laughing, but she like messed up. She was trying to moderate. Really quick and it oh. was like it was so bad. I, but I think just everything. I don't know. What? Is that good enough? <laughs> uh, yeah, I had to have people. And I told you guys I would mess up. Remember that? And I and had. You, you fulfilled that promise. I, I did. It was everybody open your eyes. And then I couldn't remember who was who. <laughs> and so everyone had to close their eyes and then open them again. I forgot about that. So that's not good, but we bring up werewolf a lot, but that I, it is hard being the wolf. It's hard to, because you know everything. That's the tricky part. You have to pretend like you don't know things. So thanks to Debbie, she thought she was just a villager. So thanks to Debbie, Logan and I, I know we talk about this, this particular moment, but it really was pretty epic because it's hard to win as a werewolf. She didn't take the village idiot roll because she didn't know it (laughs) so i started pretending like i was the village idiot and we killed off sarah pretty early i think didn't we we killed her off pretty early and she was the other the role that you took on yeah and she's also the one that cyber bullied bullied me like two days later she did yeah Uh, messages of like i can't believe you killed me you're the worst person ever (laughs) yeah she she had stuck stuck uh she's Aha. She had sicked Didi on me as well, so I was getting hate mail from Didi and Sarah. You know, it was it was a tra- traumatic week. We had everybody believing that we were both good because it looked like we were both good, and so you feel so bad to lie to people to their face, and you want to apologize, you but you're sorry, not sorry. And some of these people we've known for quite a while, so we know the tells. So we, when Marissa starts turning red, that's her tell. <laughs> and Claudine's tell is she starts to shake. So she held out her hand and she said, look, Julie, I'm not shaking. And she wasn't. But then what? 30 seconds later, I'm looking at my hand and it's just, <laughs> uh, and she thankfully didn't ask me again. But And Logan and I, every time, everybody would close their eyes and we're just, looking at each other going, I can't believe we're pulling this off. <laughs> it was it was pretty fun. That's why we were so loud because it was that exciting. So I told Claudine on the way up here when we rode together, I said, I'm going to have to do a hand check every three minutes or so to make sure your hand's not shaking because now I know you can get away with it once. <laughs> All right, Dave. Yes. Did I, or did I start with you? No, you start with anti poops. Okay, that's right. I was thinking about this and uh, trying to come up with some ideas as uh, we were preparing for the event. And I thought I was going to be different than everyone, but mine really kind of falls in line with most of what we've heard today. I obviously, I love the relationship. I'm an emotional guy. For me, I think the biggest, the moments that I love the most were not necessarily me in the relationship, but when I went home after the first salt con, when I just met a couple of you guys telling my wife how I met this awesome group from down in Harriman and I can't wait to get to game with them again. And, and I was really excited for her to get the chance to meet you guys. The thing that I love and I remember so well when she first got to interact with you guys. Well, even before that, you guys were all super excited to meet Adrian and, and the same with Nola, right? When I talked about Nola and I wanted her to get a chance to meet you guys. And you guys would ask before even you got the chance to meet him, you know, you would ask, is Adrian going to come or is no, you know, and, and I just thought that was just so awesome. And then when, when they did get a chance to meet you, it was the same thing. You were just so warm and welcoming and they really loved that as well. Yeah. I have to speak to that as well. Cause, uh, the last October I finally got my wife to attend a hug me pull event. Oddly enough, it was one that was furthest away from our home, but she was nervous. She has a lot of, of self-doubt. She was very nervous, so we, she wouldn't allow us to go on both days, so we were only able to go on Saturday, which was odd that we went to the play that was within probably 20 minutes of Julie's house, drove 50 minutes to go home, then to drive 90 minutes back the next day when we could have just stayed somewhere 
and and been there. But uh, but she was nervous, and so I mean that's a real that's a real thing. The anxiety is a real thing. It was overwhelming for her to feel so welcomed and so appreciated. We sat at the table, and Linda sat with us all day Saturday and played <laughs> games. We swapped out other people as well, but it was great for Cheryl for us to sit there and just and just have a blast. And that's what's so nice about this group that I. I say, you know, we we feel like family because those bonds are there. You know, it's 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 a greater bond than we're just showing up at game night and playing some games. You know, Hug is a pretty exclusive group. They don't have the same kind of application process as we do. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> Where is Greg? <laughs> I still want to see this resume because I never saw it. <laughs> but it was funny because after Adrian spent just a, a short time uh, with Hug, Adrian was working in South Salt Lake at the time. The Hug ladies were totally inviting her. Hey, you know, sometime on a Thursday after week, come by and and play games. Or I don't remember what day if it was Thursday or whatever. But and I just thought that was that was awesome, and it made Adrian feel really good. All right. Well, since we talked about Greg, we introduced Greg. Greg is uh, Meeple Nation's newest addition. Greg uh, met us at Salcon this last spring. Then out of the blue, I mean, we've already talked about this a little bit. But I get this email of somebody who wants to apply to be part of our weekly group. And so I'm, I'm chatting, I guess, everybody but Logan. I got this email from this guy who wants to apply for our group. What do, we, what do we do with that? I put on my best Dave Bremer hat, tried to cyberstalk. What do we know about this guy? And I was both shocked and uh, relieved at all the information I could find about Greg on the internet. He seemed like a pretty decent guy. And then we had some chats, but uh, fun fact, Greg delivered his baby on the highway. So we found that on the... <laughs> if you didn't hear that, he was surprised to know that Nathan found that. Yeah, I, I didn't realize that I was going to be uh, Google searched. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of interesting because, you know, we're inviting somebody into our house. So, you know, we're trying to get a little bit of information. Greg was a little bit nervous coming to our place. And we were a little bit nervous about having some guy that we barely knew come into our house, but it's turned out great. Yeah. I didn't uh, realize at first that uh, I was probably overqualified my resume. <laughs> 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 I, uh, I, I met all these guys at SaltCon and I had such a, such a great time because I, I found myself when I was going around to the, the different vendors and the different presentations that I found myself continually being drawn back to Meeple Nation, and that's where I had the greatest time. And when I asked to join, Nathan had asked me, like, well, why don't you just tell us what kind of games and stuff you play and where you live and stuff like that. So I thought it was like a resume process, and I entered job interview mode, and I <laughs> sent over my credentials. <laughs> yeah, it worked great, except for your favorite games, Terraforming Mars, almost axed you right there, but uh, Dave said you were okay. Yeah, it takes a special person to be able to play that, and I, I'm here with a lot of special people, so I feel right at home. Yeah, well, we're very glad to have you here, Greg. Thank you. I Happy just, to be here. Thank you. I just wish everyone could have seen the look on Greg's face when Nathan said he Google searched him, <laughs> because he started looking for the exits. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I've made a horrible error. I'm out. <laughs> We are very glad that you're part of our group now, Greg, and we look forward to uh, playing some games with your wife. We got a chance to play some games with your daughter the other day. Uh, you and your wife are going to very much enjoy this weekend and this group, and uh, hopefully I didn't make you feel too uncomfortable. Not at all. So happy to be here. Excellent. Marissa, no pressure. Okay. <laughs> it's hard to think of just one moment because I enjoy, honestly, the whole thing. And I love playing heavier games. I love playing lighter games. I love being together with the people. And I guess when I was thinking about it, the thing that came up to me, I wasn't sure whether to share this or not, but a couple years ago, like the night before we were coming, my we found out my husband got laid off and he'd found out during the day, but we were taking our girls to Les Mis at the Hale Theater that night and he didn't want to ruin our night. So he didn't tell me or anyone until after the play. So we got the kids all tucked in. It's so late. And he's like, okay, so I got laid off today. And I just panicked. And I was like, do I go in the morning? Like, I don't know. I was so worried. We've never had this happen. I was so worried. So but I decided to come and he wanted me to come. He's like, you should go. Just go. You'll love it. You'll have fun. And I got up here and I wasn't going to say anything. And then I was like playing so bad and so out of it. I'm like, they're just going to think I'm like the most boring, dumb person because <laughs> I was just out of it. And so I had mentioned that. And everyone, I just still remember that because I didn't know people that well. And everyone was just so great to me and so sweet. It made me cry. So sweet to me. And I, 
I really appreciate that. And I always appreciate the games and stuff, but I will always um, remember that and appreciate that. And everything worked out very well for us. But at the time, I didn't know. It's nice to come play games and it's awesome to come play games when you're having a great time in your life. But it's also really great to come play games when you're having something hard. Like it's just a good distraction. And that same day we were playing um, Nova Luna. And we're like, what? Whose turn is it? Whose turn? And we couldn't remember. We're all tired. And then we're like, I feel like it's never my turn, everyone. It's never my turn. We just want to play. And then we start <laughs> singing like the greatest showman. I can't sing very never well. My turn. turn. Never, never, <laughs> never my turn. <laughs> never. Because we always wanted to turn. And that, and I remember laughing so hard that my stomach like hurt. And then I went home that night and we figured everything out. And I just felt better. So anyways, thank you, everyone. Yeah, I remember that moment. That's uh, I've had some very therapeutic moments too. I remember I was dealing with some issues and I was playing a game. What game were we playing? Wingspan. I was playing a game with Wingspan with Debbie, Sarah, and Linda. The game lasted, I think it was three hours, way over. We played very little of the game and it was just, it was a great time to just open up and to share and to and really kind of solidify those bonds. Dave's a very emotional person, as am I. Something that uh, is very near and dear to me, that moment, that game of Wingspan. And uh, and I've just had several moments where talking with you when you, uh, with the stress and yeah. and I kind of shared some of my frustrations when I got laid off from Goldman Sachs. And uh, it's good to have people that are uh, just, just awesome. And, and this group really is. Linda. All right. So for me, much like a lot of you, it is hard to come up with one thing because that's why I come back is just because it's all super, super fun. All of the experiences are great. I know that social deduction gets a lot of a lot of grief and a lot of hate, but it really is the best. If, <laughs> if you like the people you're playing with, social deduction is the thing to play because it's just so much fun and there's so much laughter and you get to know each other just incredibly well. Just I wanted to go back to the whole meeting the wives because it's funny. I think that for us, that was kind of the, the culmination. Like we've had so much fun getting to know you guys. And it was just like, but we need to know your wives. We, we have to know them. And they're just so much fun and so great. And I do love it when they get brave enough to come. It's great because they are so much fun to play with. And um, so I think those are some of my favorite memories is actually playing with your wives and also with um, with some of your kids, I've really enjoyed playing with um, with Amara and Sierra. I just think that they bring something that nobody else does. Just the light in their eyes and all of that. And of course, Ashley. I, won't see forget if, I forget about her. But <laughs> no, I don't forget about her. But yeah, I mean, just all of them. Just getting to know your families, like you said, it does kind of become family, and it's just it's a great part of it for me. That that is a big part. It's just I think you had a blog recently where you were talking about what makes games fun and how playing with different people changes it. And for me, I will play absolutely anything with the right people. And conversely, you know, an amazing game can be absolutely ruined by the wrong people. So <laughs> it's all about the people for me. That's my favorite part about coming here. Excellent. William. William showed up. Finally, our friend from uh, Washington. We're so excited that he made the furthest trip to get here. The villain to Dave's life, maybe, our chupacabra, William. <laughs> you have to get really close to that mic. Closer. Okay. Closer. Here. <laughs> <laughs> history of how I met this group. I was at SaltCon 2018 and I passed by a uh, booth with Jenna. She was running something for one of her friends. I get to talking to her about the demo and then she invites me back to the Meeple Nation table. And the first game that we play is, um, oh man, it's the it's the bomb game with the cards. Time Bomb Evolution? Yes. The thing that made me gravitate towards the group is that I just felt like an insider immediately. There's like a magnetism to being around all of you. you have this special way of making me feel like I'm family, even though I live a thousand miles away and I see you a few times a year. I really, really like uh, hanging out with this group and I fly here. Uh, it's like we pick up right where we left off. I appreciate that. Yeah, it was great. We uh, we even picked you up from the airport once and took you to Bryce with us. Mm -hmm. And we had a blast that. at Bryce. That was fun. And it's funny when Will gets a little bit tired, he gets a little bit uh, giddy. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and he starts to play with the game pieces, and uh, oh, yeah, yeah. we were playing this Marvel game where it had little hands, and he kept using him as uh, as his uh, his hand props, and uh, we had a lot of fun at uh, BryceCon. Yeah, it was entertaining watching them watching him trying to clap with the little hands <laughs> <laughs> together. Hey, you but, know, if they're if they're gonna make the pieces for kids, then you might as well let your inner child out. Indeed, indeed. 
But we're very glad that you made this uh, the long voyage here. We hope that you come often. We do appreciate you here, and uh, we do feel like uh, you're part of our family. So appreciate it. And can I just say that I have just the fondest memory with Will because we had never met, and we were playing the game Medium. I think someone was even trying to explain it. Were you trying to explain it? Probably. And yeah. you put out tin and plate. And we both put our fingers to our forehead. And at the same time, we both said pie. And so I knew I had an instant friend at that moment. And that that like finger thing is not part of the actual game. I think that it just makes it a lot more fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's nowhere in the rules. I just made that up. But every time I explain it, uh, the fingers are part of the thing. I think you taught me the game as well. I have explained the game since to many people, and I didn't realize that wasn't in the rules, but it is in my explanation every time. <laughs> every time I've explained it, I have done the too. same thing, and multiple people have bought that game and are probably teaching people, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that is not part of the game at all. <laughs> so, a lot of people. All right, Doug. I get the mic that smells like Axe body spray now. <laughs> it's lotion. <laughs> oh, sorry, lotion. Sorry, Logan. It's lotion. You know, it's always such a good time to get together with the Hug Ladies, and, and hug, hug a Meeple Con is phenomenal. Lots of fun memories. One of my favorite memories, though, was actually last year recording this episode. I don't, actually don't remember the episode number off the top of my head, but listeners can go back and, and check that out. The prompt was favorite games. Prior to recording, all the hug ladies got together and conspired. And uh, so when it came time to giving responses, <laughs> they started throwing things out there like Monopoly and operation and i like rock paper scissors and if i ever want to bling the components out i just paint my nails and it, it was so good and and but here's the thing is like for the first i think response or two or maybe even three i i seriously thought you guys were being for real and I, and I was just in my head i was just dying i was like oh you sweet ladies who claim to be gamers and <laughs> don't know any good games and oh no and then your answers got more and more ridiculous as we went around the table and it was like okay the gig is up you guys are you guys are uh, pulling a fast one on us the best thing about this is like starting from the very first person it wasn't just like monopoly done right it was monopoly and then explaining the reasons why oh, and the yeah. explanations were so amazing i played operation as a child and it's so deeply meaningful to me and oh yeah it was so good uh you should definitely go back and listen to that episode because it was phenomenal not only that, I think they strategically sat in the, a specific order to make Marissa sit at the end. So <laughs> when she went red, it wouldn't give it away. <laughs> For your information, that is episode 421, Favorite Games with Hug a Meeple North. That was a very fun episode to record and to experience. Debbie, the only one that wore her hug jersey. Yes. I was going to say patriotic. It's not patriotic. What's it called? Loyal. Thank you for helping with that word. I appreciate it. Um, I had a really hard time coming up with a memory. I don't know why I oh, don't. Oh, one guy. Uh, guess, guess who it guess was. Guess whose alarm just went off. Oh, sorry. Oh, but guess who didn't silence their phone. That's so oh. weird. All right. Sorry, Debbie. <laughs> okay. I have a memory. <laughs> <laughs> Prove it. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was just thinking about what my favorite memory was, and I couldn't think of one, but the only one that stood out to me that I really remembered was the same one that Claudine said. But from my perspective, so we were playing werewolf. I was a villager, and I was sitting next to Claudine, and I knew she was the village idiot because she kept voting everybody no or to kill them. And so it was like, man, that's such a hard position because we're trying to win, and we commiserated. And at the end of the game, when the werewolves won, and somebody was like, how could you be the village idiot? Who was it? And I was thinking, who in the world wouldn't read their card? I mean, come on, guys. Other than Nicole. <laughs> Come a on, true guys. idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they made us all look at our cards, and it was me. And so that's probably the most memorable because, yeah. That's because it says village at the top and then idiot at the bottom. So when you pull the card out, you see, you see village, so you automatically villager. But yeah, no, I get you. That's, a, that's good times. Sarah, are you the only one that's left? I have many, many memories, too, of all of the good times that we've had together. 
Doug kind of took mine because that was pretty fun last year to <laughs> to come up with that the night before. And I do remember the look of pity on all of your faces because I started and I said Monopoly. And at first, everyone was just like sad. But um, <laughs> but so I just remember thinking, I can't believe they're buying this. <laughs> but that was really fun. The night before, we were peeing our pants practically talking about it because we thought we were so funny. That was a really fun one for me. And also, um, Julie had brought up previously, we were talking about, because I was having a hard time remembering memories, and she had brought up the game of, oh my gosh, I just lost it. Snake oil, thank you. I was like, Julie, like we're just playing. And at some point I notice Andy and his wife in the corner laughing and I'm thinking, why are they laughing? And all of a sudden everything got really dirty. Like everything, all, every card I pulled, every, like it was like you couldn't do it without just, it was crazy. It was, it was a really fun game. And one of my favorite things in the whole world is laughing. One of my least favorite is being bored. And so I'm always like, I love people, but I love people that I have a lot of fun with. And the first time that we ever met these guys, I remember Nathan because we played Salem. And that that game was so much fun. Like I was, I was just, I just remember just laughing so hard during that Salem game. And obviously, like if you're going to, if you laugh, you're going to have fun. And so that was a really fun thing for me. And I was, sometimes when we go to SaltCon, the only reason that I've gone in the past is because I want to be with my friends. I don't want to meet new people. I just want to be with the people I'm having fun with. And so meeting people that we actually had a lot of fun with from um, Nathan, we met Dave and we met Andy and we met Logan. And now we're, we know we know Doug. And it's just kind of like, and, and the wives have been really fun to meet. And so it's just been fun to have all these new people that enjoy the same hobby that we have playing games and sitting down and having a great time because board games could be really dry if you were with dry people, but with fun people, they're, they're really a lot of fun. I'm really grateful to just be able to be with people who really enjoy the same things that I do, but also just want to have a really good time doing it. Excellent. Where's Amara? Favorite hug and meeple moment? Um, I think my favorite Huggy Maple Con would be Hank will be playing games with the Hugglies because it has been fun playing games with the Hugglies like every Huggy Maple Con, so I think that would be my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a party when Hug is in the house. Thank you, Amara. So I think one of my favorite moments was the, it was the first Hug Meeple that we had here, and we played Salem upstairs. That was probably the most rambunctious game of Salem I have ever experienced. I mean, I was hoarse afterwards yelling and accusing it was just so much fun and uh, for my wife i think was she here i can't remember if she was here i don't think she was here for that but ashley was here and she had brought her uh soon-to-be husband at the time he was scared to death he didn't know what to do was very uh intimidated <laughs> and uh, i think back to uh, amber lee when we played with uh, amber lee at uh, SaltCon. And she wasn't quite prepared to experience a game like Salem with us. Because I think we take Salem and we take it up a little bit of a level. Uh, she didn't want to play games with Nathan for a long time after that. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, taken, it's taken a lot of repair in our relationship with Amber <laughs> Lee to uh, uh, get her to, uh, to not feel uncomfortable around me. I actually think that's one of the moments where she and I bonded because we were the villagers and she's like, oh yeah, Nathan's the worst. I get that. It was so much fun where the accusations were flying and the heated arguments. When the game's done, we're all friends. We're all just happy to have had that experience together, even though we were just yelling at each other, throwing those accusations. And But then we can't talk about a hug me pool without talking about the food. Julie says it's not about the food. But it's it, Hug Meeple is about the people. Julie is wrong. Hug it's Meeple. always about the food. Yeah, Hug Meeple is all about the people. Julie. Thank you for giving me a mic to defend myself. It's <laughs> about the people. If I want to get sentimental here, thank you for the blog that you did about our friend Nicole. You never know when your gaming moment is your last moment with somebody. Or if it's your first moment with somebody, it's an opportunity to make a connection and I think that's what we've done here. There have been people that we played the ga a game with and sat across them from the table with them, and we don't know anything about them. But it's the personal connections to me, more than the food. <laughs> but food is good. It's been very good food. No, I, you're absolutely right. It is the people. Uh, everybody's experiences has talked a lot about that, and that's what the heart of this group is. And I think for me, that's the heart of gaming in general is it's, it's not about the games themselves. It's 
the games are the catalyst that brings us together to share those memories, to share those moments, to, uh, to strengthen those bonds, to make us family. And good food just makes that better, especially when Linda makes Indian food because that was amazing. Oh, my goodness, yes. Yes, her Indian <laughs> food or her Indian buffet. I mean, she made, what did you make, six dishes? She had six crock pots there, I'm pretty sure, of all full of different things and puts my uh, teriyaki chicken and Kahlua pork to shame. Andy's, uh, well, Andy always makes good brisket, so I'm not going to even knock on that. Andy's bri- brisket is legendary, and your legendary. meatballs are pretty good too. Thank you. But I, wanted I didn't to bring go back. any this time. I don't want to go back, back, to, but just for a minute, um, I, when you were saying that everyone was yelling, I feel like if you don't have friends that you can yell at and yell with a lot, you don't have anything. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> we're just happy Andy's neighbors aren't closer. They, indeed. <laughs> Well, this has been a really fun walk down memory lane, but we've got new memories to make, lots of food to eat, and it sounds like some yelling to do. Some yelling (laughs) to do. Until next time. We'll see you at an event that will bring you closer to each other and hopefully to us at the game table. Thank you for listening and being a part of Meeple Nation. If you would be so kind as to follow, subscribe, share, and rate or review this podcast, it really helps to spread the fun. You can be more involved in supporting the podcast by joining the nation at patreon.com slash meeplenation, or you can find a link at the top of our webpage, meeplenation.com. And while you're there, look at all our extra content. There are links to all our past episodes, a wide variety of blogs, pictures from our Instagram feed and bios for all the hosts and our awesome bloggers. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, all under Meeple Nation. If you would like to chat with the hosts or other members of the nation, you can join our Facebook group, Meeple Nation Off Air. We hope to see you again at a game night, a con, or maybe a suspense-driven evening of werewolf. Thank you for listening and supporting Meeple Nation. And stay tuned for next week's episode. Thank you so much for listening. We very much want to thank our patrons who help keep the podcast running. I personally want to thank my co-hosts for all the help they provide with both content here on the podcast in addition to what we have available on our website. Without them, the podcast would not happen. If you too would like to support the podcast, you can join the nation at patreon.com forward slash meeple underscore nation. Or you can find a link to Patreon at the top of our webpage, meeplenation.com. If you have any questions, comments, or games you feel should be on our radar, you can always reach us at meeplenation at gmail.com. We can't wait to hear from you. I am grateful to Doug and Andy who helped me edit episodes. And I want to thank James and Kim Clark who do the editing on our blogs and on our webpage, which can be found at meeplenation.com. We want to thank Brain Detergent for our music. If you want to find more from him, you can follow his links that can be found on our webpage or simply search for Brain Detergent on YouTube to find more of his tracks. Thank you again for listening and being part of the Meeple Nation community. Is there a mouse in your pocket there? (laughs) Oh. All right. So much like a lot of other people, it's hard to to come up with just one. Fine. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you don't have to listen to Logan as an adult. Yes, you do. (laughs) (laughs) According to Monique, we're not that cool.